All right, let's go ahead and learn how to use UIDs or universally unique identifiers with Postgres. So basically, UIDs allows us to have a guarantee unique identifier whenever the identifier is generated. And also, the cool thing about it is that it's globally unique, which means that collisions is pretty much impossible. And the way that they achieve this is by using some really cool calculations. Uh, basically, includes using a mixture of your MAC address, timestamp, and other key factors. But I'm going to leave a link where you can access this page and read more about UITs. But basically, it's very, very interesting. So also, they have like different versions. So you can see, for example, version one is consisted of the date time and the MAC address. And then you have version two, version three, and version four. So three and four, three and five, and also version four, which is completely random. So let's go ahead and learn how to use this with Postgres. So I'm going to go back to my terminal. And remember, in the previous video, I've showed you how to select and then start from PG and then available extensions. And if we scroll down, you can see that we have this UID OSSP, right? And to use UIDs, we have to add the extension. So right here, you can see that we don't have any installed version. So let's go ahead and install that. So I'm going to press Q. And to install an extension, you simply have to type create and then extension. and then if not exists. So if not exists, simply make sure that it doesn't install the extension if already exists. So it's an idempotent command, which means that you can execute as many times as you want, and it will only have an effect once. And the extension that we want has to be within quotes and simply type the extension name. So for us is uid and then dash and then OSSP, and then press semicolon, enter, and you can see that now we created the extension. So if I go ahead and select star from extensions or PG available extensions, enter, and you can see that now we have the version 1.1 installed. Now let's go ahead and learn how to generate a UID. So I'm gonna press Q, and in order for us to generate a UID, we have to invoke a function. So if I pretty much just press backslash and then question mark and simply search for function and then scroll down. So right here, you can see that we have this command. So backslash DF and then we can see the functions. So let's go ahead and try that. So I'm going to press Q and then backslash DF enter. And now look at this. So now we have these functions right here, which are available to us. So remember, so because we just installed the UID extension, we have these functions right here. So prior to that, all of this was empty, which means that now we can pretty much just invoke these functions right here. So the function that I want is this one right here. So version four, and if you remember correctly, version four is completely random. So I'm going to go back and to generate UID, simply type select and then the function name. So UID underscore generate and then V and then four and then pretty much invoke the function. Press semicolon, enter. And now actually just let me make this bigger so you can see exactly what we're doing. Right. I think this is better. So now you can see that we randomly generated a UID. And this will be unique every time I invoke this, which is amazing. So let me just simply run the same command again. You can see this time is completely different. And I can run this a million times. And basically, the UID will never be the same. And this makes it a good fit for using UIDs as primary keys in our tables. And one of the benefits of using UIDs as keys is that it makes it very hard for attackers to try and mine our database. For example, if you had an API forward slash users and then the actual user ID, 
So an attacker could actually exploit all the numbers. So one, two, I don't know, one million or, you know, any random number and try to delete everyone or update information, so on and so forth. But with UIDs, it's very, very difficult for them to actually guess which person, for example, is in your database. Another benefit is that because they are global unique, that means that you can migrate data across databases without any conflicts. So for example, if you had a database A and database B, and basically if you were using big serials, so a big int or an int, then most likely you would have clashes when adding some data from database A into database B because of the actual IDs, right? If you were using big serials, it's auto incremented. And basically in both servers, there's no way to actually tell that the IDs are different. And that's definitely a big advantage of using UIDs. So this is all for this video. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to change our tables to use UIDs instead of big serials and big ints as primary keys. This is all for now. Join me in the next video. See ya.